So dot product is one of the most important things we're gonna learn in math, and it's pretty cool. It takes us to a very important part of STEM, and it's used by so many majors. So you should feel uh, happy and proud that you're finally gonna learn dot product and cross product. Cross product is on Friday, but also projections. So that is the first time we're gonna introduce to you different types of products. Well, if you ever learn matrices, then we actually should know that products can be different. Matrices have different types of products as well. Uh, complex numbers have different products. So vectors also have different products. And to be honest, we will never learn division of vectors. There is not such a thing, thing as dividing vectors. So this is what you call difference between different sets. Um, number sets, we know everything about it already. But vector set or vector space doesn't have all the properties like uh, we used to usually have because of the direction. So dot product is introduced like so. If you have a a1, a2, a3, and it's a vector, as you can see brackets, and b, b1, b2, b3, the dot product is, it looks pretty straightforward. You just multiply corresponding components and then add the result. a1, b1, a2, b2, a3, b3, and up together you get dot product. You see, there's a dot, so it's literally a dot product. That is a type of the product, only one of the types of the products between vectors. One more formula. We, you can check the derivation of the formula in your book, but basically it uses right triangle, and through the right triangle it uses cosine. So dot product can be found as the size of A, magnitude, remember, the size of B, times cosine of the angle between them. So that's the one more formula we'll be using. Same thing. Now, the idea is, I will tell you in the future, and we're going to write it down, dot product, actually, let's write down right now, dot product answers the question, kind of, how parallel vectors are. That is unusual question because in school you learn that vectors are either parallel or not. Math is so straightforward language, everyone says. It's either yes or not. It's either zero or not. Well, it's actually much more creative than you think. Mathematics is pretty creative. And there is an interesting idea that, yes, two vectors are parallel, but if they're not parallel, if there's a difference between how not parallel they are, some vectors are very not parallel and the other are like almost parallel, right? So it would be nice to know how parallel or not parallel vectors are. Dot product answers this question. So what is the most non-parallel example of two vectors you can think about? Perpendicular. Perpendicular, right? So very parallel will be two lines. These are parallel, but one is a little bit tilted, right? So two parallel lines never meet. That's what we know from school. But if it's a little bit tilted, they will meet, but like really far, maybe in three thousand years, they will meet. So those are almost parallel. Dot product will be large for that uh, situation. Dot product say will show you large numbers, and you're like, oh, those two wind directions. Uh, the number product, product gave me large numbers, so they are almost parallel. So they will add up probably, and then the wind will be very strong and make a tornado. Perpendicularity is the most non-parallel situation, right? So this is the most non-parallel. What will be dot product from the perpendicularity? Zero. zero. So not parallel means dot product shows you zero and you're like, oh, two wings are perpendicular to each other. And that's where dot product will show you zero, which also uh, coincides with the idea of cosine. Cosine of pi over two is zero and that's why this product is zero. If A and B are orthogonal or perpendicular, if and only if, you remember the notation IFF, if and only if, oh, I showed it in different class. That's American notation, which is very nice, IFF, uh, which means both ways. Two vectors product give you zero, means they're orthogonal, and if vectors are orthogonal, dot product is zero. So what to point out, also put here in front of the, in front of the title. This is a scalar, or it's called a number. Dot product gives you a number. So, a million. Wow, those two vectors are almost parallel. Zero, they are perpendicular. It's a finite number. It's a scalar. So that's an important remark. Remark, the dot product of two vectors gives you a scalar. Scalar basically is a number, right? Number. 
Other names of dot product you will see in literature is a scalar product because it's a number or inner product because it multiplies inner components. A1 times B1, A2. So it goes inside of the components of each vector. That is also important. You will see it at some point. Inner products is a popular name as well. Does it make sense? What do you think about that? Not too bad for now. So let's have an example. Do -do -do. Example, let's find inner product for A. A is a vector, brackets, and it's one, two, and three. And then B, B is the vector, four, five, and six. Whatever, just random. Let's calculate A times B. As you can see, I'm putting this dot on purpose to indicate that it is dot product of two vectors. Another notation will be 1 and 2 and 3 dot 4 and 5 and 6. That is also a dot product. So if you write it in, if you go to Japanese conference of, of engineering computer science and you write this, Japanese students and professors will understand what you're talking about is dot product, even though we call it different in different languages, right? So how do you do it? Who knows? What's the answer? 32. Well, okay, how did you get 32? <laughs> how did you get 32? Uh, 1 times 4 in front of the B. 1 plus, times 4. Uh, 2 times 5 in front of the B plus uh, 3 times 6. 3 times 6. Sorry, I kind of ignored your parentheses. Uh, which is, should I check or we agree? 32? Yeah. Yes, 32. Nice. Good job. Makes sense, so we can do that. Let's calculate, that's example as well. Let's calculate A times A, which is one, two, three, again. So A times A, A times A, vector. Okay, did you notice that I put it in the box? Good habit to put your answer in the box. It will be easier to find it, and also grading is easier for us. This is a number, as you can see. That will be very important, because soon the answer might be, the answer might be a vector, a number, a set of vectors, different vectors. So we need to know like what is going on, what is your input and what is your output. Dot product gives you a number. A times A is one, two, three times one, two, three. Sounds like class from, from school. And then you multiply, it gives you one squared plus two squared plus three squared. Does this remind you something? Well, first of all, it's 14, okay. But, uh, I mean, this notation, does it feel familiar from your previous chapter? It's very close to magnitude. Some people already noticed, good job. Magnitude just has a square root, right? And indeed, so, magnitude, which notation did you like after all? A double line or one line? Double. Let's do double, yeah. I also like it more. The double line, which is magnitude or length, right? Magnitude. What does vector have? Who knows? Two things. Direction and magnitude. Direction and magnitude. Remember that. I will be asking magnitude. This is something I should wake you up in the middle of the night and like, Navia, what is the vector? And she's like, direction and magnitude. <laughs> and then go to sleep, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's a random voice, okay? Don't get upset. I don't want to offend anyone. Uh, two squared plus uh, three squared. I also always have random guys voice like, what is going on here? And then uh, girls like, ah. so no connection to particular people. So that is a square root of 14. So note, that's a note. And it is a fact, A times A is a square of the magnitude. So dot product has a connection with the size. Dot product Dot product is size squared. It makes sense because if I'm checking how parallel this vector to itself, it's not very, very parallel. So what is the biggest number you can have? The one you already have. If it's one, two, three, the biggest will be times one, two, three. <coughs> and that's why it will be a big number. A big positive number. Like yeah, this vector is parallel to itself. That makes sense. Something far from zero. One more of applications is, well, how do we find if vectors are 
perpendicular or not. We checked by taking the dot product, right? Let's just check that. So solution, are the following two vectors perpendicular? Perpendicular, you know the notation like so, right? Or orthogonal, that's more official name actually. Uh, but in Russian, we do say perpendicularne, so it's also what? close. Perpendicularne. <laughs> perpendicularne. So I find a dot product, and if it's zero, right, then they're perpendicular. If not zero, they're not perpendicular. That's basically the whole idea. Let's do it. A times B, and I will skip the notation really fast. 1 times 3 plus 2 times 2 plus 7 times minus 1. See, we did dots before, right? But this dot is a product between numbers. Now we're doing dot, which is a product between vectors. Your brain's supposed to slowly agree with this, like it or not. That these are two different things. We're multiplying and adding two different scenarios. 3 plus 4 minus 7 gives you 0. Yes, they are orthogonal or perpendicular. Not too bad. Bless you. One more example, which I'm going to skip, says, uh, okay, for which t two vectors will be perpendicular? <laughs> Several vectors are given, say they are wings or magnetic fields, and they are floating in the air, and you're like, hmm, we kind of find, we found the directions of them, but one, one uh, component is missing, say Z component, we're like, we can't measure how far it goes. We want magnetic fields to match to one direction, to be stronger, match one direction means parallel. And you're like, what T should be to make it parallel? And that's where those examples are coming. Uh, parallel or perpendicular, you take dot product and solve for missing component, and that's how you know how to create parallel or perpendicular vectors. Properties of the dot product. Oh, you don't have to copy this, to be honest, they're very standard. The most important is that you can switch the order. That's not uh, very common. That's your U and V you don't like. U times V is V times U. You can distribute sums. So don't have to copy this, just, just to remember. The scalar multiplication, you can multiply by C outside or inside. See the difference? C is a number, a scalar, and then U and V are vectors. V multiplied by zero vector uh, is zero. So that makes sense because zero plus zero plus zero gives you zero. And by itself gives you the size squared. That's a magnitude. Magnitude squared, right? So it's the basic properties, uh, vectors in the plane or in space, and the C in the, is the scalar. Yes? No, I mean, if I copy it from the book, they have it U and V because it's a professional way. But I try because you guys requested to do A and B now. But U and V is not a problem in our countries because it's not part of the alphabet. So you guys are struggling because it's kind of, they look the same, yeah. For us, it's not the same. We will learn like U is like so, and V is like so. Do you know how my ex looks like? I always ask my freshman students, this is how my ex looks like. So I always ask this, would you like me to keep this X or this X? And you all like, I like the second one. So I always do that one. But then I ask like, but how do you cross it if it's wrong? Like this? <laughs> so this one at least it makes sense, right? But like this one? Yeah, we, Russians don't do three pull through it, okay? Russians do one line weird and then move on. Who, who does like, no, that's too weird. <laughs> You can scribble it out if it's wrong. Yes, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But what if it's canceling? What if it's canceling? So the most beautiful letters in, uh, we actually do use, Russians use Greek letters for you to know. And that's why we have uh, pi, of course, we have pi. That's capital pi. And then we do have beautiful D. That's D. We do have phi. Phi, like so. That's phi, phi, phi. And then the most beautiful is A which is like so a. and it is actually in mass if you take upper level classes you will see a there and then the most weird ones for americans i think is sh sh that's a letter sh 
Like so. Let's shoot. And then, and then, ooh, ooh. That's ooh. That's yeah. No, no. The confusing part is that this is s, not c, and then this is r, not p, and then. No, there's lots of. That's why it was so confusing to learn for us. This is h. So my IA came today. Please come in. Yeah, but you don't have to stay. So uh, hello, my. Uh, this is Asia, and she was our IA for the whole year already. That's why students like her because she's amazing. She actually likes helping a lot, and she was not uh, working for this class originally because of the some documentation mistake, and then we fixed the mistake read literally two days ago, and now she's working for our class. So she'll be grading your quizzes, you should be nice to her. And she is a hard grader, but she will explain you your, her uh, cr criteria, what did you say, criteria? Yes. Yeah. And she also wants to spread to you how to be successful in this class, because she already passed all those classes. She's ready to graduate, okay? Almost there. No, no, would you like to say? You said you want to Oh, you I want to watch. You want to watch? Sure. But you see, there's no empty space, though. So you can, you have to. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Take this. Also, Asya will be holding office hours at uh, 8 or 9 p.m. via Zoom. And she will choose the date for that. Yeah, probably Wednesday. Probably Wednesday. We're going to announce you later. So use the help from the IA. It's also very convenient about this. It's like psychological help from another student. Uh, it's always really And uh, she's been amazing, so we kind of like to have to write before she's graduating. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, move on. Let's move on to... That is also extra. Magnitude, we had this. Who got too excited over there? So, geometric interpretation. You guys concentrate because I want to explain something here. Jacob. Ike. No, Ike is great. <laughs> you guys actually know. Ike is like, I'm fine. Um, geometric interpretation. The dot product measures how. I would not say close two vectors to each other. I would say parallel, <coughs> parallel. So I would do just a denotion like this. How parallel two vectors are in terms of directions and in fact consider the three following scenarios. Very interesting, so like I told you, two parallel vectors looks like this. But look at that. If I have a ruler, right? And I will draw some kind of random vector, say like this. If I want to have if I want to have a parallel vector, I will just move it down and keep the same degree. In this case, it's 8. So a parallel vector looks like this. They never meet. We know that. But what if I just change a little bit to 7 degrees? Look at that. If you show it to someone with not very good vision, they will tell you this looks also parallel. Like, no, my rule says it's 1 degree off. So at some point, they will meet. But probably they're going to meet really far off, long way to where they're going to meet. So they are almost parallel, and that means the dot product will be large. So if you have a small angle between the um, vectors, dot product is big and positive. What about having big angle? The big angle, like so, if you keep moving, they also become parallel, right? Just in the opposite direction. So it will be also big but negative. So big number will tell you that vectors are close to each other to be in the same direction, the same, same direction or opposite direction, but they are close to be parallel. So maybe they add up to the fourth state, like a wind blowing away. But the negative sign will tell you, okay, they're the same, but one side goes up and the other side goes down. Now we already understood that if it's perpendicular, then it's literally the least opposite, the least thing we can imagine about being not parallel, that's perpendicular. So the dot product will show you zero. That makes sense. That also makes sense. So this is geometric inter interpretation. 
Soon we're going to be working with the ideas how perpendicular vectors are, and that is a cross product. Now, uh, how about calculating uh, using dot products the angles? Very popular idea. If the angle has a relationship between how big my dot product is, then probably I can use this formal to calculate what the angle is if I know the dot product, right? So find the angle between A and B. And you're like, oh, that makes sense. If I check the dot product and it gives you a big number, the angle is small and so on. So it definitely has some kind of connection between these things. So let's do this example. First of all, you can imagine that they look like so. You can draw them uh, if you want. 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, minus 2, B and A, and there's a theta between them. Now, for this question, we're going to use second formula, which is this formula. This is the formula. You don't remember it? I actually showed it at the very beginning. At the very beginning, I showed you the formula. Let me repeat it just in case for you which is a dot product of two vectors can be written as the size of one times the size of the second one times cosine of the angle between. This formula is derived from the right triangle as always. So side times side mm, times the cosine of the angle. Now, from here, you can just solve for cosine if you are asked to find the angle. You solve for cosine and then you apply arc cosine, right? If you don't have to memorize all of these formulas, maybe memorize one and then you can solve for this when needed or so on. But uh, some people actually remember that cosine is A times B over A times B. The top, the top is a dot product between vectors. The bottom is a product between two numbers, what numbers? Two sizes of vectors, right? So as you can see, you can even rearrange numbers. Um, x1 times x2, component times component, plus y1, y2, z1, z2, over size times size. So let's see. Here they are two vectors. Let's start the formula. a times b, a times b, those are vectors equals 1 times 0, that is 0, plus 2 times 1, that is 2, plus 3 times minus oh, 2 is minus 6. That gives you minus 4. Agree? Agree. Well, I, I don't want to stop on algebra, to be honest. It's too boring. Some people will fall asleep. I'm already trying to wake up people at the very end of the classroom. Don't sleep, okay? Now, what else do we need for the formula? Two sizes, remember? So we need size of A, two magnitudes, and size of B. Someone at the end want to tell me what is size of A? At the end of the classroom. Square root, how did you get square root of 14? <laughs> two squared plus three squared, thank you. Let's not pretend to be the Smart ass students. <laughs> no, no, I always say when we're going to have a group quizzes, I always say there's a three types of people in the group quizzes. One person who knows the material and, and happy to help. The other person who doesn't know the material and is happy to receive help. And is a smart ass student who is sitting alone and like, I'm going to finish everything. I'm done. Yeah, so I always encourage to be helpful for others and explain everything in steps. Make sense? Somehow in my mind, it did not sound offensive at all. But when I said it out loud, it was a little bit offensive. <laughs> That's the problem of the Russian language. It's way too straightforward. And when I say it in English, it's like, oh, that was rude. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. Yeah, that was not nice to say, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, I still do, yeah. So what we're doing here is... We have the formula, right? Okay, someone already left to Don't complain to the department. I said something then. <laughs> A times B equals. So we, what are we doing here? We have size of A times size of B times cosine of theta. So we got everything we need. 
size of uh, so a times b is minus four minus four you see it's a number the result of the dot product is a number size of a is square root of 14 size of b is square root of five cosine we don't know and that's because we're looking for it so for cosine cosine of theta let me know if it's too fast minus four over square root of 14 times square root of five is square root of 70. Finally, I will stop here. Tell me, what do we do now? Do you have space? Oh, I'm good. Let's apply exactly the inverse of cosine. Remember how to undo cosine? You apply arc cosine. Or cosine minus 1, that's the same thing. Yes? Uh, what does the negative 4 represent Good question. It was here. It was a times b. It's from here. And a times b is coming from multiplying component by component. So 1 times 0 plus 2 times 1 times 3 times uh, plus 3 times minus 2. That gave me negative. Make sense? So we need three things. Dot product, magnitude, magnitude. And dot product became minus 4. Formula tells me how to use it all. Dot product equals magnitude times magnitude times cosine. So that's why negative 4 was here. Make sense? Good question. You guys should always stop me. Uh, I always make this joke that uh, if you're afraid to stop in a structure because you think like, oh, she probably just said it. I don't want to be that person. I always say, what if you like you drop the pencil on the floor and while he was picking up, you pick it up and like the whole board is covered with formulas now because I'm going too fast. So you can ask like, I'm sorry, I got distracted. What is that? You should always ask that. This is a good thing to do. To undo cosine, I'm applying arc cosine, or you can call it cosine minus 1. So it will be, which one do you like? I like arc cosine. Arc cosine of minus 4 over square root of 70. And in your homework and exam, you can keep it as the answer. But if you want to, you can use your calculator. Don't forget to change into radians. Uh, zero no one one oh this one actually is in degrees okay fine i don't know okay let's keep it one of the versions okay two point what zero seven, zero seven radians do you remember how to convert by the way pi over 180 180 over pi that's how you do it People like no, and I don't care. <laughs> that was a good old times. Yeah, yeah, good old times. How do you feel about this example? Not too bad. Yes, questions. Okay, you guys, it's not very interesting when you took your exams, uh, classes. You can talk about it after the class. Physical interpretation, that's also pretty good. We're going to skip this. Actually, we can do it. So physics, you know, this is engineering course. So there's so many examples of physics here. In, in pure math, we do more pure math and proofs. F is a force and D is displacement. You remember displacement? I'm walking here and there and it, I'm doing what why I was walking. F times D, which is a dot product of two vectors, right, is a work done by those two vectors. So that makes sense. If if uh, I'm pulling the box and you are helping me to pull it as well, so you're also pulling, but you're weaker than me. <laughs> so two of those forces are parallel to each other. That product will be big because that is work done, right? If you are a dum-dum and pulling it like so for some reason, <laughs> like why would you do that? I'm pulling it this way and you're like, oh, probably she wants to pull over there. And now it's perpendicular. You undoing my pulling for some reason. So that's going to be work times zero, right? So like, why would you do that? Or so that's actually, the yeah, or, or completely the opposite also. So that, that will be, dot product will be large, but negative. So it will indicate that. So that's a pretty good, makes sense idea in physics. And this is how it looks like. Work done by force F, um, displacement, given the angle 35. Blah, blah, blah. You'll have this in your homework because you are engineers. Many of you are engineers. And if you're not, you know, say thank you to engineers. That's what we're doing. Why we're doing this. F times D. Let's write down. 
Work is F times D. So now we know the formula. That is size of F times size of D magnitude times cosine of the angle between them, which is 35. And now they are given one is 70 newtons, right? And the other one is 100. And then cosine of 35. Who remembers cosine of 35? 24. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. 5, 7. I will just write down the answer. And time. So newtons per meters. What do you know? Do you know what newtons per meters is? Thank you. Joules. Joules, right? That's how you say it. Mm -hmm. Ju Joules. Yeah. Jules. Okay. It took me a while in calculus too. I was guy was helping me to pronounce like Jules. <laughs> so vector projection. Oh, is it too fast? Did you copy? Vector projection will be starting your confusion in this class, I would say, and cross product on Friday. Yes. No problem. So vector projection is actually the first type of the projection. It's very uh, straightforward and convenient to explain, and then it becomes very nice. Uh, I have a vector given, I have a vector given here. Let's call it A. It is just doing whatever it was doing. And then there's another vector show up. Let's call it B. And now there's a question like, what kind of shadow the B will be on A? And it's the thing that even though B can be very long, the shadow might be shorter, right? So, for example, if B is this long, but it's very almost perpendicular, and that's why this almost perpendicular or almost parallel idea comes into the into this scenario again, the shadow will be small. So it's very interesting that the size of the shadow actually explains the correlations between vectors and how parallel or perpendicular they are, right? So that's a pretty cool idea. And that's what we're going to call projections. This shadowy or pulling down and see how it's going to look on this original vector A. That is a projection. The size of the vector will have its own name. The direction and the size will have a different name. So that is a vector projection and scalar projection. Yes? Yeah, you know, I don't like physics thing, so <laughs> any any is good. Here's the most important application of that product is a projection of one vector on top of another one. Here is the idea. Here they also added a line L. That is not necessary. But let's say A was on the line L. Okay, fine. Why not? And it starts from 0, 0. Here is B. How many ways I can project or make a shadow on L? Oh, you know, maybe like so, or maybe this the the sun is over here, and maybe like so. So, what is the shadow should be? And that's where mathematics becomes very concrete. Let's all agree what projection is. Is it like with the angle like this, the angle like this? It depends on the sun. There's no sun. It's math. So, the most makes sense idea will be to to keep the perpendicular angle, right? That's like. No matter where this composition of vectors will be floating in the air, there's one particular right angle, right? So that, that makes sense. So there are many ways to project B on the line L, but only one seems to be optimal. Let's call it B hat. The hat looks like that. It doesn't matter. You can call it B star, B hat. In this case, we're going to call it B hat. Who's the hat? Here it is. And I will also call it for you, let's use another color, let's call it P and S. P, S are points. So P, S is the projection of B, and let's call it, it's a vector, so it's B hat. B has a new, um, very, not internationally, no, surprisingly, that's not how I was taught it. Proj, because it's English, kind of, they decided to use English here. Projection of b vector on top of a vector that is now p s which is vector or let's call it b hat doesn't matter so this 
this notation is something I actually had to learn in the United States. So this is a local kind of idea. But uh, I think uh, more people now know it, so it's fine. So this is what you call orthogonal projection. It makes sense because it's orthogonal. That's the one we decided to keep is this right angle. That is the best one. Why orthogonal? Because it's precisely the vector on the line L. What kind of vector? Let's keep the arrow up. So if we keep the arrow up, look what's happening here. This P, this original one, B, this is B, goes up. The bottom one, which is a projection, goes to the right. And the right angle one goes up. From the triangle definition, it's actually a difference. B minus B hat. Remember the definition of difference? That's a difference. The difference tells you if, you if you connect dots, the pointy part, that's where B, and then the bottom will be with the minus. That's how I remember it. And the, the important part is that B minus B hat is perpendicular or orthogonal to A, right? All of these are vectors. Is this getting confusing or what do you feel about this? Confusing. Yeah, that is getting more weird. So, this is weird. Okay, now this is getting interesting. Look at this. Look at this. What is going on here? If you show it to a student, they will be like, those mathematicians are crazy. Just cancel out everything. What is happening? You cannot. You cannot do that. That's interesting. We never learned division of vectors and actually it doesn't exist. Vectors cannot be divided. So this is a vector. This is a vector. This is a vector. This is a vector. And this is a vector. Very interesting. What is happening here? This is a formula for the projection of B on top of A. Write this down. This is important. How do A memorize it? And B, how did it even happen? Here's the idea how it happened. So this projection is lying on top of A. Remember, because that's the whole idea. Here is my A, and we're projecting on top of A, right? So they are parallel. If you remember, being parallel means, from the previous class we learned, the parallel means that this vector will be a number. Uh, your homework tells you, create a vector at five times larger than the previous one. What do you do? You multiply by five, right? Or half of the previous uh, vector, you multiply by one half. So that's the thing we know there, that the projection we have to be a number times a. That's what we call Dr. Graham called the jump. I don't know. It's a number. It's a number. So this is actually a number. Very interesting. It's being derived. It actually sounds very hard to derive it. I can show it to you if you want. But it is interesting that this is a number. How do we know? B times A is a dot product. Dot product gives you a number and it begins as a number, big number, small number, negative number. A times A is also a number. Number over number is a number. Number times a vector is a vector. So the false answer is the vector. It's exactly the definition of the projection. Vector projection is a vector. So for you to understand, all of this is, after all, is a vector, not a number. Because this is a number. So it's just number times a. If you want to memorize the derivation, that would be nice of you. But if you don't, I never heard this hugging analogy before and I really liked it because now it actually makes sense. B hugs a. This is how they are in the formula. A gets excited, so hugs itself. And that's how you memorize it. Such a genius idea. I like it so much. It's so cute. So B wants to be on top of A because it's projecting on top of it. So it's hugging it, right? A gets happy about it and also hugging itself. And that's how this number is. So your job is to remember B. No inappropriate joke. B equals A. Memorize the number. Yes, especially. And is that just dot product uh, in the new layer and the denominator? Yeah, all of these now are dot products, yeah. And this is a scalar product, just a number times a. Yeah, and are we gonna get the coordinates, or are we just gonna be given vectors? What? Like, 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 if we're given coordinates, I understand how we do this. It's just it's a dot product. 
But we're just given a vector like in the example above. Yeah, yeah, good question. If the coordinates you multiply is component by component, or you have to use the cosine of formula or the right triangle to find it. Yes, that's a good question. Also, the Russian red tape, what? What are you talking about? I was about to ask, would you mind to repeat your question, please? Well, this kind of long sentence, you know? Oh, well, my mom was the exact same thing. She would never let us say what. Like, if we, yes. if, if we didn't hear, we would have to say, sorry, can you repeat that again? Yeah, yes, yes. Sorry, can you repeat it again? Because it's rude here to say, what? It's like Russian say, what? What? What are you saying? <laughs> Please repeat again. So, yes, that was a really good question. Thank you. Let's do it. Let's calculate at least one and see uh, how we're doing about that. Here's the example. Write it down. Hugging analogy is supposed to help you to memorize the formula. See, I like it a lot. Such a good analogy. Let's do it first because there's one more example left uh, to explain you and then we're done. So B hat, let's not call it B hat, let's call it projection. P R O J of B on top of A, all are vectors, equals. The formula tells me I only remember that it should be times A because it's parallel to A, it's on top of A. Then B hugs A, and the order doesn't matter. That's good. Over A gets excited, hugs itself. Oh, nice. See, I remembered, so you can do it too. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't have good memory. I'm always very honest about this. So if I get memorized, you can do it too. So let's uh, multiply B times A component by component really fast. What do you guys think? It's going to be 3 times 1 plus 6 times 2. Uh, minus 2 times 3, which is 6. Agree? Yep. Yes. The bottom, A times A. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 36. Minus 2 times minus 2, be careful with that, is plus 4, right? That is a number, as you can see, times A. A is 3, 6, and minus 2. Don't get confused. Which one is a vector and which one is a number? The first, in the parentheses, we are going to have 9 over 49 multiplied by 3, 6, and minus 2. And now what is the answer then? How, what, how we proceed, do you know? Is the answer is a number or a vector? What is going on? It's a vector. Vector, and you just infuse this number, which is basically distribution. 27 over 49, 54 over 49, minus 18 over 49. That is... A vector projection of B on top of A. Not too bad, not too bad. Last five minutes, uh, maybe I'll take a uh, scalar projection. Scalar projection is this size in green with no direction. And we're going to call it component of B over A. So not a vector projection. It will be just a size. Sometimes we just want to know how long this shadow is. We don't, wanna, we don't care like, what does it look like. We just want to know how long the shadow is. Intuitively, the scary projection is defined to, uh, in the green. It's just a lack of a triangle with hypotenuse size of B. So we don't care about direction, just size of B and angle theta. And that's why more trigonometric functions show up. It looks like this. There are two formulas here. Scalar projection is either size of B times cosine theta or there are ways to fix it and get rid of cosine of theta. It's just dot product of A times B over size of A. Two formulas are useful, and it actually adds up to that question you asked. Uh, how do we find if we don't know components? You use one of these formulas. So whatever is given helps you, uh, and maybe not. So the vector is a vector. Let's review. Pro vector projection of B on top of A. That is a vector. The scalar projection of B onto A is that shadow we have, and that is a number. So let's write it down. That is a number, which might be positive or negative. Why? Let's see. Here, how do we project uh, this vector? Oops. This vector on top of here. This is how. That's easy. But what if this vector is completely outside of this? Then we kind of imagine V is going the other way around and still project it on the floor. And the negative sign will show me that result. So that is also important. And then, before you run away, let's actually 
applications. Of course, the applications with the, you see how they call it in physics, they call it B hat, which is orthogonal projection is tangential pro component. B minus B hat is normal component. And then this is just a size of that projection. Yes. Component of B on top of A. And now before you run away, check this out. Just a second. See, this is what is happening as a projection on here. I'm extending an invitation to both of you to the study group.